Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Sunday over here in the Atlantic. The big story right now is Tropical Storm Irene over here in the Northeast Lesser Antilles Islands moving west-northwest. This is a big ticket storm and this is going to be something that folks are going to need to watch very closely here over the coming days. This is the storm close up right now. You can see where the center is in here. This is the mid-level center at least. The surface center is still displaced to the southwest found by recon but this will not remain that way for long. We can see it's moving west-northwest. And this is the radar out of the Lesser Antilles here. We can see very clearly, I'll let this loop once, the center's right in here. And this is moving west-northwest. Now, the recon is finding the pressure falls down in here, but it's finding southerly winds up here, north of where it's finding the pressure center. And St. Kitts had a pressure report of 1,002 millibars an hour ago, which is interesting because the recon has only been reporting 1,007. Now, the center is being found down here, but southerly winds here, which means that the new center is going to start forming in here, locating under the mid-level spin. This is not going to remain displaced for long. Eventually, this will become vertically stacked, and the southerly wind is telling us that this is about to relocate here, and the center is about to reform, and eventually it will become better defined. And the problem with the storm is that it's still a 50 mile per hour tropical storm and the flight level winds haven't supported anything stronger than that yet but look at the satellite presentation with this this is what we're talking about in terms of a deep tropical system in the middle of the hurricane season this has got the banning it's got the outflow out to the east and it's got the core is struggling right now but the overall look of the system is one that's going to intensify and it looks better on satellite than a 50 mile per hour 50 mile per hour storm and eventually it's going to improve to actually look and be as strong as it looks in here. Now there is going to be a little bit of dry air ahead of it. San Juan, Puerto Rico shows a little bit of dry air in the mid-levels here. It's not horrendous but it is enough to stall it for a little bit here. The core convection is actually not that strong in here. I don't have the infrared up to show you but the core convection isn't all that bad in terms of how strong it is and the core is going to be a little bit hampered for the moment and there's a little bit of an outflow boundary coming out to the southwest of the core which indicates a little bit of dry air and as this tries to interact with Puerto Rico and northern Hispaniola this may hamper it for the moment but this is the issue with it folks it was going to be down here the forecast was to have it down here and then move up into Hispaniola the center is up here now it's reforming northeast we talked about yesterday how where the center was going to try to form in the niche of winds where the wind gradient was greatest, greatest yesterday, it indeed did form there. And now we're looking at it trying to stack up much farther north than the models had it. And now even my track from yesterday, which was the most northerly option at the time, is now going to have to shift even farther north. If you look at these tracks here, they have the center down here and you can see that they bring them into southeast Florida here, extreme southeast Florida. What happens if you shift it 50 miles farther north? Look what happens. We're talking about the Carolinas now being potentially in the target area as well as Georgia. This is now not going to move over the bulk of Hispaniola. This is aiming for the northern part of the Dominican Republic possibly via passing directly over Puerto Rico which means Puerto Rico is most certainly in the direct path here and is going to get tropical storm conditions from this hefty tropical storm conditions at that right through the core here so they should be prepared hopefully for the tropical storm that they have a warning out for and then the Dominican Republic could be dealing with a minimal hurricane by the time it gets there if this core can get together and get rid of this dry air and stack up the center by then but this is now moving towards the northern coast of the Dominican Republic, may even try to avoid it altogether, we will see here, but it's not moving over the bulk of the island, and the problem with this is that once it comes scraping the northern coast here, it's going to have time over water before it reaches the southeast United States coastline with which to strengthen, and this could be a major storm. You can see the outflow here, there's this boundary, there's cold air aloft over this area of the world right here, and, but, and this outflow boundary shows that, but the storm is pushing it towards the west. This boundary is just getting shoved west-northwest, illustrating how the storm is just throwing heat out in front of it here, and this means business. The storm really is one that could be something that becomes pretty strong in this area, and I'm not going to lie, a major hurricane in this area is not out of the question over this warm water, especially if it tries to only graze the north coast of the the Dominican Republic, we could be talking about a major hurricane threatening the southeast United States coastline in a few days. 
Now we can see what's going on with the pattern right now. We have the storm way down here. There's a trough diving into the northeast United States right now, not quite that sharp, but it's diving into New England. And again, this is going to be influencing a weakness north of the storm. It's going to break down the ridge in here, try to draw the storm a little bit farther north temporarily. If we go out to the European from last night, 48 hours, here's the trough reaching maximum amplification over Jersey here and right over the eastern seaboard. Here's where it has the storm, probably a little bit too far south, but you can see that the break in the ridge is here, which means that the storm is going to try to move northwest towards the Bahamas and then we go 24 hours out again just like all the other troughs this year this leaves really fast and within 24 hours it's already exiting off to the northeast which leaves the break here and then the ridge in here is going to start building back towards the west very quickly so this is trying to move northwest and then the ridge builds back and the weakness retrogrades towards the coast and this gets kept on a northwest path and it's going to stay on that path right into the coastline and then we get out here it gets into the Bahamas and then oh it bridges the ridge in here. This is a classic pattern to have the ridge bridge over the top as the trough is gone. The flow over the top is flat and zonal and this is a storm moving northwest right into the coastline here in this case Georgia and northeast Florida. A rare track but again coming in from farther south and where the storm is likely to be. It's more likely to be up here and then guess what? That landfall point shifts up into the Carolinas. And now we're talking about a situation where the eastern gulf has now been taken completely out of the picture. This is not going into the eastern gulf of Mexico. This is going to be a threat for the Florida east coast and the Carolinas. This area here is going to be threatened. Again, details we will know more of, but the Carolinas I think are solidly in the bullseye now, especially if this tries to only skirt the northern coast of the Dominican Republic. We will see if it actually gets stacked up before then, otherwise the surface center may try to get more directly over the center of the island here, but this is not coming as far south as the models thought and my track from yesterday has to be shifted north. My track yesterday was like this and this is now going to have to shift a little bit farther north and we may be seeing this going into the Carolinas along the Gulf Stream in um, four to five days here. This is a situation that we've been talking about. The pattern has been favoring the landfall of a hurricane in the southeast United States. For weeks now, we've been talking about this pattern setting up during August here in the last couple of weeks, about late August. And the situation allows for a storm that looks like this to come in here and become a powerful system. And it may be knocked down a little bit first here by Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic as it gets rid of some more dry air. But you can see the surface winds in here are not moving very much this area is primed and when you get a situation where the bridge is over the top here you can't see my cursor I'm sorry but you can see the ridge bridging over top there's a flat flow there's no giant trough in here trying to shear the system and bring it north instead it's gradually curving coming in north northwest towards the coast and it's a situation where this could be a pretty strong and powerful storm. So folks should really be aware of this. I don't mean to hype up and alarm anybody, but if this does try to scrape the islands here via Puerto Rico, this could be a, a bad storm in here that folks should be aware of, and folks along this area should be watching the storm closely and making sure that they have their hurricane plans set and ready to be in motion in case your area is the target for this. Could still be East Florida. It really depends on how much this knock gets knocked down by the Dominican Republic, whether it can be steered farther north by that trough that comes over in two days. By Tuesday, that trough will be over the northeast. How strong it is here will determine how far north it comes before it makes its move towards the coast. Could still be East Florida, but the Carolinas are solidly in the target zone as well. And my new track probably has this skirting the north coast of the Dominican Republic, coming through the Bahamas, and then coming up more towards Georgia and South Carolina. We will see how this evolves over the next few days, but again, I think the eastern gulf is probably taken out of the equation, and now it's these folks in here that really need to be watching this. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.